Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The uh, title of this lecture is going to be Evidence-Based Decision-Making. Uh, I will be reading to you the learning objectives which you are going to be handed and the reference will be in Carranza's Clinical Period Ontology, 10th edition. All right, let's start. The learning objectives understand the need for evidence-based decision-making in order to assimilate scientific evidence from the literature for guidance and implementation into practice. Also, to be aware that accreditation standards for dental education programs require that graduates should become critical thinkers, problem solvers, and consumers of current research findings to enable them to become lifelong learners. Also, we have to be able to define the three dimensions, the triad of evidence-based decision-making, which include one, the integration of evidence with clinical expertise, two, patient values, and three, their clinic and their clinical circumstances. Also, incorporating recent knowledge to practice by acquiring crit critical appraisal skills by examining validity and relevance. Also, to be able to formulate a well-defined research question by applying the PICO process, which provides the foundation for the terms used in database research, specifying systematic reviews, meta-analysis, etc. To assess the hierarchies of level of clinical evidence to guide clinical decision-making, stressing systematic reviews, meta-analysis, rather than relying on a single research study. Also, to critically evaluate research methods, which include meta-analysis, systematic reviews, research uh, co uh, random controlled trials, cohort and case controlled studies, and to be able to differentiate between systematic reviews, meta-analysis, and traditional reviews, and to assess evidence and how to minimize bias. Also, to find ways of accessing evidence through electronic databases and effective online searching skills to find relevant evidence, thereby keeping up to up to date to recent advances in dental therapy. Now, <clears throat> the importance of evidence-based periodontal therapy. We have to know that there is rapid technical advances in information and explosion placed greater demands on clinical decision making very many new information that we um, come up with now a number of co new concepts concepts materials and treatment modalities have been used in the treatment of periodontal disease without an evidence-based assessment the evidence-based uh, decision making represents a paradigmatic shift that emphasizes evidence over expert opinion and judgment over blind adherence to inadequately supported rules. We have to know what is true and what is false, what to believe and what to not, not to believe. Now, the uh, next slide tells us or shows us that you now at the dental school or university, you will be graduating very soon, inshallah, and there you're going to stay years and years and years and years and there will be a gap there, there you have to have knowledge to bridge the gap between what you learned and update your information so your question will be how can i incorporate recent knowledge to my practice by using current unbiased empirical evidence without reliance on authority now uncritical acceptance of techniques. Some people accept techniques without even evaluated whether they are true or false. Many recent studies, studies in periodontal therapy have been sponsored by industry, like antimicrobials, guided tissue regeneration, membranes, etc., etc., etc. New. So, now, because they're sponsored researchers, the researchers are going to make an attempt to make those materials like as though they are the best in order to please their sponsors 
So what they're going to do is um, try to frame the research to prove a, 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 a method that cannot be proven or may be false. So also apprehension will be, exist between finance, financial considerations which will compromise an investigator, investigator's professional judgment. So your judgment or the investigator's judgment is going to be affected by the sponsor who paid the money for the research. So there will be bias, or tahayus. Now bias is the selectively choosing the evidence to support one's own views. So a, a view that may be wrong will be uh, uh, presented as though it is correct. So, next. Okay. Uncritical acceptance of techniques. Okay, there are certain techniques that are new and people just use them without even understanding whether they are right or wrong. Seduction by authority because acceptance must be based on the weight of clinical evidence and not on perceived authority of its proponent. A, a very famous uh, writer will may indicate that this technique is correct without evidence. False idol of technology. Does the use of new technology represent a more effective approach or just gratify a desire to use the newest gadget? Because some people get very excited of using certain techniques or certain um, chemicals or certain um, other agents because they are new. But not everything that's new is better than the old unless there is enough evidence to support this. And on the other end, let sleeping dogmas lie. Some people never want to use the new and they say the old is better. So there can be much danger in continuing to use an old technique as there is an, in adopting a new one that still remains unproven. So evidence-based dentistry the key to find evidence is to start with a well-built, focused question. And two, there should be a critical appraisal, appraisal of evidence. One, evidence is based on assessing validity or closeness to the truth, or assess, and two, to assess relevance, importance, and usefulness. Validity or closeness to the truth is decided whether what you're reading is valid or invalid, and this is what we, we are going to be discussing, uh, which, what to believe and what not to believe. Sometimes uh, a good research can be good, but may not be relevant. Relevance is whether the research is useful or not useful, because there can be researches that are very good, but cannot be used. So, in order to appraise evidence, you should do, know both validity and relevance, or whether it can be used or not. All right, now, we have to start by fo focusing on the question involving using a framework to ident identify the problem. The P-I-C-O problem, for example, patients who smoke, we're going to do an intervention, smoking cessation counseling in the dental office. All right, this is the intervention of a smoker. And we are going to compare it, C, comparison, comparison of the test or intervention with patients with no counseling versus patients who have had, had counseling for smoking cessation. And then we see the outcome. The outcome are the patients going to, with counseling, quit smoking, or with no counseling, quit smoking. So the question will be, will the introduction of chair side counseling for my adult patient who smoke help those patients to quit smoking? This is a question of therapy. All right, let us have another example. The type of question now, a problem, P, intervention, I, comparison and outcome, the PICO. The problem here is intervene or the treatment or prognosis factor cause for, or prognosis for patients who with osteointegrated implants who smoke compared to patients 
who do not smoke, the intervention is smoking, compared to comparison with patients who do not smoke. What do we expect the outcome to be, or what is the outcome we are expecting to test? What is the proportion of implants lost in 10 years? All right, let me show you. 